Hi students, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to take you to one of the important chapter in your second PO that is electromagnetic induction. This is the sixth chapter in your syllabus. Maximum eight hours is allotted from the PO board, and in your final exam, the maximum weightage will be six marks. Already people know that there will be one five marks question and one one mark question. Or it will be one three mark question, one two mark question, and one mark question. That will be total. It will be maximum weightage chapter carries six marks. Now, before we can go for the chapter electromagnetic induction, just we can look into previous chapters. First chapter in your syllabus we discuss about electric charges and fields, and second chapter electrostatic potential and capacity. In electric charges and fields and potential chapter, we are going to discuss about only charges are at rest. When the charges are at rest, it produces the electric field. We people discuss earlier. Now, come to the third chapter, current electricity. In current electricity, we people are going to discuss about only the charges are in motion. When the charges are in motion, it produces the current. First three chapters, first two chapters rest, and it will be motion. Current electricity. Now, when you come to the next chapter, moving charges and magnetism. In moving charges and magnetism, we are going to discuss about when the charges are in motion. The charges are in motion. Motion of charges. Motion of charges produces the magnetic field. Produces the magnetic field means when the charge is in motion, it produces not only current, it also produces the magnetic. Field. means we are producing magnetic field from the moving charge next fifth chapter magnetism and matter we are going to discuss the magnetic elements and its properties now in this chapter we are going to produce the current electrical current from the magnetics okay we are going to produce the electrical current from the magnetics means this is the vice versa in this chapter Here we produce the magnetic field from the charges. No, now this is a reverse process. We are going to produce the current from the magnets. Actually, what we are going to discuss in this chapter. Clear? Yeah. I think we got the idea. We are going to, in this chapter. We are going to produce the currents from the magnets. Clear? Yeah. Now. What's the purpose of studying this chapter? Why you are going to study the electromagnetic induction chapter? In short form, we are going to call it as EMI. No, why you are going to study the electromagnetic induction means nowadays so many electronic devices what we are using in our daily life that turned out work under the application of electromagnetic induction. Simple example can we take induction furnace, electric motor, electric generator. uh high speed trains like bullet trains these and all devices are work under the application of electromagnetic induction at the end of the chapter ending of the chapter i will take any two or three uh, electronic devices i am going to explain the working at the ending of the chapter i will explain the working of two or three devices now we can come to the electromagnetic induction here already i told we are going to produce the electrical current from the magnets no that one first experimentally verified or demonstrated by michael faraday we are going to call as faraday's experiments before we can go for the faraday's experiment just we can first we can discuss about magnetic flux magnetic flux the magnetic flux we are going to denote it by a symbol pi symbol pi in the first chapter already people studied about electrical flux now that electrical flux we are going to write phi suffix e now i am going to write magnetic flux phi suffix b electrical flux phi suffix e magnetic flux phi suffix b we are going to use now Then the magnetic flux we have to define is just I am going to take a magnetic field region. I am going to take. I am going to take there will be 
magnetic field region of strength B I will put it. This is the magnetic field region of strength B. In this magnetic field region of strength B, I am going to place a, a closed surface or I am going to place a coil of area A and B. Now, this is the closed surface or coil of surface area A. In this one, I am going to take a small area, I am going to take D or delta A, I am going to take this is the small area. For example, see yes, this girl. This entire room I am going to call it as a magnetic field region. The magnetic field lines are passing in this direction. This is the closed surface or surface area I am going to take. In this one, I am going to assume small surface area I am going to assume. This one small portion I am going to take. Then I am going to take a small portion. Always the area vector we are going to take normal to the surface. This is the area vector I am going to take normal to the surface. We are going to call it as one area vector. Earlier, first year itself, we people studied the area vector. Always we are going to take normal to the surface. This is the small area I am taking. Here I am going to take normal. I am going to take area vector normal. I am going to take this is the theta angle made by the area vector and magnetic field. Okay, I am going to take theta is the angle made by the area vector and magnetic field. Okay, so here first I am going to write the expression for magnetic flux over a area element D. I am going to write the magnetic flux through a small element, small area element. I am going to write delta pi. Delta pi is magnetic field B. Area element delta A cos theta. This one we can write in vector form delta pi B is equal to vector B dot delta A. Means B A cos theta. A B, A B cos theta is equal to vector A dot vector B is vector B dot vector delta A. Now this one. The total magnetic flux. For example, I am going to measure the magnetic flux for the entire surface. The total magnetic flux. Total magnetic flux. Total magnetic flux. When you have to measure the total magnetic flux, you know, many people know that we have to take summation of integration. Here I will take the integration. Integration of delta pi b is pi b. Limits integration limits varies from zero to a. This area maximum area will be a. Now b b a cos theta. This one we can write pi b is equal to b a cos theta. B a cos theta in vector form also we can write delta pi b is equal to vector b dot vector a. For example, if the coil having n turns, if the coil having n turns, if the coil having n turns, we write flux pi b is equal to n b a cos theta. N b a cos theta. This is the expression for magnetic flux. Okay. So here. Yeah. Simple example. Already I told this room, entire room. I am going to take an as a magnetic field region. The magnetic field lines are passing through this direction. Now this is the surface I am going to place. This is the surface I am going to place in the magnetic field region. When this is the surface I am going to place in the magnetic field region means how many lines are going to be passing through this surface? We are going to call it as what? Magnetic flux. Keep in mind the how many number of magnetic field lines this is. Magnetic field lines are passing this direction. When I am going to place one few lines are going to be passed through this surface. Now that one we are going to call as what? Magnetic flux. Magnetic flux means definition. Say the total number of magnetic field lines passing normally through a given surface area. The total number of magnetic field lines passing normally through a given Surface area we are going to call as what magnetic flux. We can write the expression if only one term B A cos theta 
if I am having n number of terms, n be a cos theta, we are going to write. Here, for example, in, in your example, they will ask, what are the factors on which magnetic flux depends? Mag no, factors on which magnetic flux depends on this, first of all, it depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. Yes, it depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. See, here, already people know that in moving charges and magnetism, when the strength it will be maximum, or field strength it will be maximum, the magnetic field lines are closer. Now, when magnetic field lines it will be closer, the number of lines crossing the given surface it will be maximum. Again, the flux it will be maximum. Therefore, it depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. Clear? Yeah? Next one, VA. For example, I am going to take this surface area, few lines are going to be passed through it. When I am going to increase this area, what will happen? Again, more number of lines are going to be passed through it. No? Therefore, it depends upon the area of the surface. Next one, angle. When I am going to keep like this, see here, this I am going to keep like this, few lines are going to be passed through it. When I am going to change the angle, what will happen? Number of lines passing through this surface, again it will decrease changes. No? Therefore, the magnetic flux it depends upon the angle between the area vector and magnetic field. And also, it depends upon the number of terms. Only one term is the lines are going to be passed away. Again, you are going to increase the number of terms. What will happen? The magnetic field lines pass, pass through each and every term. No? Therefore, it depends upon the number of terms. Therefore, keep in mind, what are the factors on which magnetic flux depends on this? First one, it depends upon the strength of the magnetic field. Second one, it depends upon the area of cross-section. Third one, it depends upon the angle between the area vector and magnetic field. And it depends upon the number of terms. Here, unit, SI unit for magnetic flux is vapor. SI unit for magnetic flux is vapor. Symbolically, we are going to write the below. If this is the SI unit for magnetic flux. The CGS unit for magnetic flux is Maxwell. CGS unit for magnetic flux is Maxwell. Here, 1 Weber is equal to 10 to the power of 8 Maxwell. Keep in mind, SI unit for magnetic flux is Weber. The CGS unit is Maxwell, 1 Weber is equal to 10 to the power of 8 Maxwell. In, in case of few problems, they are going to give the unit in CGS system. That time we have to convert it to SI system. That time we have to remember 1 Weber is equal to 10 to the power of 8 Maxwell. This is about your magnetic flux. Magnetic flux means that will be simple. The number of magnetic field lines passing normally to a given surface area, the formula we can write for flux is equal to B A cos theta or if I having n number of terms, N B A cos theta. This is about what? Magnetic flux. Clear? Now, we can look to special cases. First one, if theta is equal to 0 degree, if theta is equal to 0 degree, I already told what is theta, theta means is the angle between the area vector and strength of the magnetic field. When theta is equal to 0 degree, here in this formula, when I am going to take flux, phi is equal to B A cos theta, when theta is equal to 0, you know that cos 0 is equal to 1 means the flux phi is equal to B A or N B A we are going to write. Means the flux it will be maximum flux. Flux will be maximum. Means this one, how means? See here, this is the surface. Magnetic field lines are passing through in this direction. When I am going to keep the surface like this, this is the area vector. See, area vector and magnetic field both are in same direction. Yes, sir. This is the magnetic field and this is the magnetic field. This is the area vector. Both are in same direction. 
angle will be 0 degree and angle will be 0 the flux it will be maximum we are going to write n b a this one we are going to show diagonally say this is the magnetic field of strength b here i am going to take a surface and this is the area vector both are in the same direction it will be 0 flux it will be n b a that is the maximum Second one, if theta is equal to 90 degree, theta is equal to 90 degree, means angle between the area vector and strength of the magnetic field is 90 degree, means both are to be perpendicular. When it will be perpendicular, in this formula, cos 90 is equal to 0, no? When cos 90 is equal to 0, 0 into anything, it will be 0. Now the flux phi b is equal to 0. Flux by B is equal to 0 flux. This one we are going to show diagonally. Say this is the magnetic field region of strength B. I am going to take here. I am going to place a surface. This is the area vector. The angle between these two will be 90 degree. The flux will be 0. Say when I am going to first case, first Z theta is equal to 0 degree. I am going to place the surface like this. Second one, say this is the magnetic field. I am going to take this is the surface. Say area vector will be in this direction. This is the magnetic field. The area vector and magnetic field angle will be 90 degree now. And theta equal to 90 degree. Cos 90 is 0. Flux will be 0. When you come to the third case, if theta equal to 180 degree, theta equal to 180 degree, Already people know that in this formula when I are going to substitute cos theta is equal to 180, cos 180 is minus 1, means the flux phi b is equal to minus nba. Flux phi b is equal to minus nba. Then I are going to show diagonally both strength of the magnetic field and area vector will be opposite direction. This is the magnetic field. I am going to take this the surface. Area vector, I am going to take opposite direction. Means, now I am going to magnetic field is in this direction, this is the surface. Area vector will be in this direction, magnetic field will be in this direction, both are in opposite direction. Already we know that when two vectors are acting in opposite direction, means what? 180 degree, in 180 degree, the flux phi b is equal to minus Pn b. Both it will be maximum flux only. Zeta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to 180. Both it will be maximum flux only. But here we are going to take uh, direction is important. Here both it will be in the same direction. Here it will be opposite direction. That's why maximum flux means NDA. Minimum flux means 90. Theta equal to 0 maximum. Theta equal to 90 minimum. This just direction shows the opposite direction. Concept of parallel exponents. Thank you.